Joining me to discuss this are writer Polly Courtney, who's a critic of the prize. Kate Moss, she's a novelist and is also co-founder of the Baileys Women's Prize for Fiction and also literary critic Alex Clark. And Polly, I'm going to start with you. Mm. What's the problem? Well, there is a massive problem in literature in that women writers tend not to get noticed they, or, or not proportionally noticed. They don't get enough coverage and they don't get the right sort of coverage. Um, but I believe that the answer is not to set up a whole separate playing field, rather to level the playing field that we have with the prizes that are open to men and women. Is this, is this a good view for you? Is this, is this fair? I, I think Polly's on our side, actually. That, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't sound like the prize. Um, the prize is about celebration. Always has been for 20 years. It's been celebrating brilliant books by women from anywhere in the world written in English for male and female readers. So our um, aim was always to say, these books are excellent, enjoy them now. It's not about whether you're changing everything, it's not a big political campaign, it's simply about celebrating the best writing by women in the world. And everything the prize has done, all the literacy campaigns, all the special reading groups for boys and for men, all of our prison reading groups, everything is aimed at men and women reading amazing books by women. And why would you not need to celebrate books? You need to celebrate books. You it's absolutely very do need to yeah. celebrate books. And yeah. I think any conversation, including this one, that talks about books and gets people thinking and talking about books is a great thing. However, I don't understand why the Bailey's Prize for Fiction isn't open to men as well. And then you just have a very fair judging panel, which is what we're seeing in other judging panels actually across the board in, in book prizes, that just allows men and women to win on merit alone. Alex, you think Polly's making a fair point? I always think those arguments that say we must include everybody because otherwise we're excluding people for no good reason come from the place that says there is a level playing field already and there simply isn't. No, there isn't. You know, I was talking yesterday to Pat Barker, for example, who spent you know, years trying to get her first book published. And then the late Angela Carter said, why don't you go to Virago? And her books were published by Virago. Eventually, she wrote the books that are Regeneration, that amazing World War I trilogy, because she felt that she was being typecast as a novelist of working class women's life. Now, this happens to women continually, women writers and women readers. They are typecast. It doesn't happen in the same way to men. No, it doesn't. And that's exactly the reason I left my publisher, because I was being typecast as a women's commercial fiction writer, whatever that means. I mean, I, don't need, I really don't know whether that means it's aimed at women or written by women or worryingly a combination of the so two. You left your but I, I left that. my publisher because I was being branded as a chick lit author. When I was writing books, my first book was a, an expose of the city the financial world and it definitely had a sort of gender neutral audience therefore I, I was frustrated at the way the, the constraints that were put around women's writing and and the packages that were often given to them and the lack of exposure and the wrong sort of exposure but I believe that we need to change that and I think a lot of the fault is the publishers rather than yeah. the prizes um, I think prizes are kind of catching up and we've seen the last two man booker prize winners were women um, so I think publishers have a lot to answer for I'm not sure the prize actually addresses that this is essentially because most people who read novels are women. I mean, that's the bottom line. Well, it, it's it? also, I mean, obviously over many years having these, these same discussions, is that every year because of the existence of the, the Women's Prize for Fiction, now sponsored by Bailey's, there is a debate about gender. Um, every year there is a debate about reading and gender and writing and gender. And before we founded the prize, uh, fewer than 9% of novels ever shortlisted for any literary award were by women. And now that has gone up to 48%. Now, this isn't just a coincidence. So it's not perfect. Prizes can come in for lots of criticism. And of course, I, I welcome the fact there's always a debate, although it's a little tiresome when the prize is Why so... Why are you tired? Why is it so tiresome? Yeah, because it's so successful. It's a very odd thing that something that is so successful in delivering male and female readers, celebrating the best all over the world, transforming writing careers every year, um, we have to justify our existence. Whereas actually most other prizes don't, and that is mysterious. The other thing that is very important, but I think is a bit depressing <laughs> um, over these years, is that the world has changed in many ways wonderfully, but it's also changed in many ways that are regrettable and depressing. And what is happening now, which is something of enormous pride to us, is that in many countries in the world, girls write to even read 
is under threat, which it wasn't when we were doing the prize. Every year now, the minute we announce the long list, we get emails from countries in the world saying, you have no idea how important it is to those of us who read and those of us who wish to write, that there is visibly something saying that women's creativity matters, that it should be okay. out there in I the think, arena. I think what Holly's trying to say is that maybe there could be other ways, alternative ways of celebrating women, which perhaps absolutely. might need to I've come never, from publishers. I've not come across them yet. Um, and the thing is, you either sit on your hands and moan, or you do something. What we did was set up a prize to celebrate women. A lot of people won't like that. But you have to make a decision. Either you act or you don't. Well, Polly, are, are you sitting on your yeah. hands and moaning? Absolutely not. And I took the decision to effectively burn my bridges with the publishing industry that had treated me. I was with HarperCollins, which is a big that machine. Massive. It's that a is. big machine, and it does churn out a huge number of books. And the particular imprint I was with churned out 50-something books a year, i.e. one per week on average. And, right. uh, and they were all by women, and their strapline was, we know what women want, which I think actually, with retrospect, means that I, I took the wrong decision by being, you know, um, entering into an agreement with them. Um, but I think that those sort of things are really dangerous because they are effectively saying books by women are of a certain type and they were all packaged in a certain way and they are all for women and that's just so exclusive and not inclusive. But so I, I went independent and I now publish my own books as, along with a lot of other yeah. How women is that out doing there. And it's great, it's so you. nice because I am in control of not just what I write, which actually was a uh, constraint, but how it looks and how it's promoted. So I've been able to do my own things that reach the gender neutral audience that I have for my book. I mean, I salute that. I think you're absolutely right to take the power for your own publishing for yourself if it's not suiting you. But this is a different thing. A literary prize is about celebrating books by women from all over the world, of all nationalities. It isn't the publishing industry. It's a diff th these are separate things. Everything Polly says about publishing, I agree with. And actually, Alex has done amazing work in just looking at the numbers of women and men that are reviewed, and that is still very poor. Very but they're three support. separate things. They're all connected, obviously, but a, a prize is about celebrating women, as I, as I keep saying. I know it sounds rather dull. Um, there is also Never a British... Does, a, a British no, 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 exactly. <laughs> I don't know why I would say that, that, but... Yeah. but there, there, you know, we had a very clear thing. The prize was set up because in 1991 there was an all-male book of shortlist. And that's fine, because the judges have the right to choose the books they like best. What worried men and women in the publishing industry and journalists and booksellers and librarians, and it was a, a mixed group that came together to talk about it, was that nobody had noticed that there were no women. Nobody at all. I think yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember those times and I, I remember yeah. you know, being very... There, there were all sorts of examples of all-male situations. Yeah. Like, you know, boards in, in FTSE companies is another example, and, and you know, media was terribly sexist. Mm. And there are, still, there are still massive issues. We have massive hurdles to climb. But I think that, take the example of the parallel of women in boards, we don't set up separate boards to, to, you know, to get them into those positions of power. We include them in, and we try to make sure there are channels there are many into the in main which ones. that is the case. And, and I do come back to, with this particular instance, the idea of what, what the implication is that a prize like this does harm, and I really can never see what the harm it is supposed no, to be doing. No, I, I disagree that I, I'm certainly not of the opinion that it does harm, but I don't think it's the right way to encourage equality in the long run. Okay, what else could you recommend? Um, well, I think we need, I think that the prize as a concept is great, but I think you might as well open it up to men and just have men and women on a really equal footing, which is what we don't see, as you pointed you out, in other prizes. Point, because if the judges have the right to make the decision, then you are handing over that sense. It's mm -hmm. not the same as boards, where you can say you can have a quota or whatever. The group of judges right. in the room will make a decision. Um, and it's a very interesting thing that all we are doing is saying that every year, we will guarantee that there will be 20 on a long list and six exceptional novels by women. Right. And it will change right. every year here and there. Ladies, they thank are... you. <laughs> thank you so much. Let's take a look at how you guys have been polling. Now, this morning we've been asking you if you think we really do need a women's book prize. Take a look at what the results so far. Like so far, 63% of you said yes. Yes, we do need a women's book prize, um, which I'm sure you'd be happy um, to hear, um, Alex and Kate. And 37% of you actually think no. Ladies, thank you so much. Okay, this debate okay. might be over. You can still tweet us at London Live, hashtag Headline London, to send us what you think of it, like we're all.